It truly, you know, when, when the Qur'an is recited, حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ The way it's supposed to be recited, it unlocks the heart. And today, we listen to some of the most beautiful ayat in the Qur'an. As there's no, you know, we could, we can, you know, Qur'an speaks about so many different subjects. But there's one thing in the Qur'an that's spoken about only once in this particular way, and it's describing the greatest thing in existence. And that's what he recited in the first, in the first uh, raka'ah. Do you know which surah he recited from? Surat? Surat An-Nur, Ahsantu, mashallah. And it's called Surat An-Nur, the surah of light, because what is it describing? Allah. So he began with what? Allahu nuru as samawati wal ard. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. And subhanallah, we are searching for what? We want to know our Creator. We're dedicating our life, our death, everything that we do to our Creator. We want to know about this Creator of ours. And Allah describes Himself in this ayah. Allah nuru samawati wal ard mathalu nurihi kamishkat. Who knows what a mishkat is? Have you ever been in a house? I know when I was younger and I went to Palestine, we lived in an old beaut. Uh, when I went to visit my grandpa and grandma in, in Palestine, my uncles and my aunts, they lived in old houses. Like I'm talking about, when I say old, I'm not talking about 100, 200. I'm talking about like before America was discovered type old. Like these are 500, 600 year old houses, right? That's been, they've been in the family for, for like centuries. So we went in the house, there's something in the house called a mishka. And that is basically like a little window in the middle of the wall. It doesn't have a window. It's just a place that's like kind of like pushed in. It's like a shelf that's built into the wall and they put something on it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the example of Allah's light is like that mishka. You see that? That little box in the wall? The square rectangle? Yeah. Mishka. Fiha, inside of it, is a misbah, is a lantern. Okay, now I want you to visualize this. This place in the wall, the mishka, it has a lantern inside of it. Al misbahu, this lantern, fi zujaja, is inside a glass cover. Now, a zujaja, this glass cover, ka'annaha kawkabun durri. It's as if this glass by itself, without the light that's in it, the glass, it's as if it is a star, the brightest star in the sky. Yuqadu min shajaratin mubarakatin zaytuna. And this flame that's coming out of it, you know, we put kerosene and we put all types of like, like oil and whatever it burns, right? On the bottom. No. Allah is saying what's burning here is oil from an olive tree. But not any olive tree. لا شرقية ولا غربية It's not to the east, not to the west. A perfectly standing olive tree. A perfectly standing olive tree. يَكَادُ زَيْتُهَا يُضِيءٌ It's oil. It's as if it seems to light without even touch, being touched by fire. وَلَوْ لَمْ تَمْسَسْهُ نَارٌ نُورٌ عَلَى نُورٌ The oil is light. The lantern is light. The fire, the flame is light. The, 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 the glass is light. Now I want you to think of this mishka that has all this light coming out of it. Why did they put it inside something? Why couldn't they just hang it on the wall? Can someone explain to me? If you're like an learnt in ancient architecture, right? Why did they have to put it inside the wall? Why did they have to have something that goes into the wall? Do you know why? To, to brighter, because that it reflects on the whole wall 
and then that wall, it lights everything else. Correct? Subhanallah. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the end of the ayah, Nurun ala nur. It's light within light. Yahdi Allahu li nurihi man yasha. He only guides to it whomever he pleases. Guys, you know, sometimes when there's a light in here, sometimes you look right under it, is it dark or light? Sometimes there's no light right under this inlet. And sometimes there's a lot of light that's very far. Allah can bring the distant with His light and can misguide and prevent from His light the ones who are closest to Him. I worked in Medina as a teacher and I would talk to my students sometimes. And I would tell them, hey guys, you know, the haram was right down the street. Like I could make every salah in Masjid Nabawi. Every salah, even like take a break for Dhuhr, go drive there, three minutes, park in the bottom, take the elevator, boom, I'm right there in front of the Rasulullah's grave. Yani I'm, I'm there every day, you know, five salahs because the haram is the local masjid. So when we used to go pray, I used to come back from salah and teach a class to my students. And I'm telling them, guys, who, who, who went to the haram to pray today? None of them. One of them, and then they would say, haram, what are you talking about teach? I haven't been there in five years. You live three minutes away. Three minutes away. And people, people I saw that live in Siberia would come and they'll live in the haram. They perhaps prayed in the haram more than this person who lives three minutes away in their whole life. That person in two weeks would pray more than that person. Subhanallah. And then would go back home and get the ajr of praying in there because Allah knows if He kept them there, they would have kept praying in there. <laughs> Subhanallah. Because their reward is by their intention. So Allah guides to His light whomever He pleases. Just because you're close doesn't mean you're guided to this light. And just because you're far doesn't mean you're misguided or you're casted away. But there's one thing, you know, if I describe something beautiful to you. It's beautiful. Some, we all like food, right? Let me, let me just, if I describe, uh, I'm not going to say cheeseburger because everybody's gonna be like, hey, wait a minute. He's trying to plug that in right there, right? The hamburgati. No, I'm not going to say that. You know? But let's say like a beautiful, uh, like a, a, a rice dish, right? And they tell you what spices they put on it and the oils it was cooked in, and the meat, and the, the, the different condiments, everything that comes with it, until you visualize it. What's the first question you're going to ask? You, if I tell you about this dish, what are you going to say? Huh? No, no, please don't say, is it halal? Because, of, no, it's going to assumably, it's halal, ya akhi. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Right? I described, you know what I ate? I ate this and it has this on it. And it has this. And then they added this. Oh my God, it's so delicious. What are you going to ask me? Where can I get it from? Okay, where's this at? After Allah described His nur, what are we going to ask? Ya Rab, where do I find it? Where's this nur? I, I want it. That you guide people to. I want to get to it. The first ayah after this ayah is what? No. In houses that Allah is allowed for it to be established, His name is remembered in it. In the day and in the night, it's remembered by who? Rijal, men. But not just any men. Tijara means what? They're not distracted with trade or with selling from the remembrance of Allah. So doesn't trade inc include selling? Because trade is buying and selling. Correct or no? When I say tijara. But Allah said selling specifically. It's kind of like wafakihatin. You know, waruman. <laughs> like, okay. Fakiha is fruits and ruman is what? Pomegranate. But why did Allah separate pomegranate from fruits? It is a fruit. Because Allah wants you to imagine that. He intends that specifically. Okay, so here Allah wants us to focus on something. Tijara, trade, doesn't distract these people from the masjid, 
from the house of Allah and selling specifically. For all of us who have businesses and we're selling and we're hustling and bustling and we can't, we're about to make a big sale and the adhan is called, it's Jum'ah time and I gotta make it to Salah, but man, I gotta make this sale. If I keep pushing, I know he's gonna budge. I'm gonna make $10,000 commission right now. All I gotta do is keep, keep at it. He's about to sign it. He's about to sign it. And guess what? And you're looking at the time and you're about to miss Jum'ah and you gotta make that, that trade-off. Allah is saying the ones who have his light are these men. The one who drops that sail. Like, you know what? I really got to go. I'll come back later. You know, if, if it was written, then we could sign this contract. If not, it's okay. These are the people who have the light of Allah. It's tough, right? But this, this is where you find it. Allah described it. Subhanallah. We ask Allah to bless us with his light. We ask Allah to guide us with His light and to guide us through His light and to make our lives light and to make our eyes and what we see with His light and what we hear with His light and to fill our hearts with His light and to fill our life in our death in our graves with His light. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallam barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum. إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما